The Girl Who Could Not Dream by Sarah Berth Durst Chapter 1 Sophie had only ever stolen one dream. She'd been six and curious, two not unrelated traits. The dream had been stored in a brilliant blue bottle with a gold-flecked stopper. It was the only unlabeled bottle in the batch, and she thought that meant it wouldn't be missed. She'd spotted it on the top shelf after her parents left, one to the grocery store and one to tend to a customer. She had to haul the books downstairs from the shop and pile them on top of a stool before she could reach it. Stretching, she touched the bottle with her fingertips, knocked it off the shelf, and then caught it before it could shatter on the old stained counter below. It took precious seconds to wiggle the stopper out, and she chugged it down without hesitating. It tasted like fresh melon. She thought she'd see a swirl of mist first, like the squiggly fog that always came before a dream in a TV show, but instead she plunged instantly into the dream. One second she was in her parents' workroom beneath the bookshop, and the next she was tucked into a bed with a cupcake pink ruffled sheets. For an instant she thought she was in her bed, even though she didn't have pink sheets, but then she remembered who and where she was. Sitting up, Sophie looked around curiously at the cotton candy wallpaper and the shelves of toys. The owner of this room had a Barbie dream house and liked horses. A nightlight in the shape of a pink unicorn cast a rosy glow over the room. Pink shadows stretched. One of the shadows twitched, and a shadowy monster crept out of the closet. Sophie felt her heart beat deliciously faster. Slowly, so she wouldn't startle the monster, Sophie scooted out from under the sheets. She waited. The monster skittered left. It dodged right. Sophie pretended to look out the window at the moon, stuck between the pale branches of a tree. Out of the corner of her eye, she noted that the monster seemed to have several tentacles. She looked at it, waiting to count them, and the monster dived beneath the bed. Lying flat on her stomach, Sophie leaned over the edge of the bed. She lifted up the dust ruffle. Moonlight swept under the bed. The monster huddled in the shadows. Its fur bristled like a cat's. Hi, I'm Sophie, she said. It bared its teeth, three rows of shiny, sharp, shark-like teeth, and growled. Shh, it's okay. I won't hurt you. She felt her heart patter inside her ribcage, and wondered if it would hurt if the monster bit her dream self with those teeth. She guessed it would, but only until she woke up. Come on out. The monster snapped its tentacles like whips, and Sophie scrambled back. Retreating to the pillows, she took several deep breaths. She told herself firmly that she shouldn't be scared. This was what she wanted, after all, her very own dream. Inching forward, she again leaned over the side of the bed. The monster waved its tentacles at her. You have lovely tentacles, Sophie said, like a fairy octopus. Did you know that an octopus can open a jar with its tentacles? I read that once. I like books. Do you like books? My parents own a bookstore. It's nice. We have lots and lots of books. She kept her voice soft and even, as if she were luring out a stray cat. The monster lowered its tentacles. That's a good monster. You can come out. The monster scooted forward. Sticking its head out from beneath the dust ruffle, it looked up at her. It had overly large eyes like a lemur's. Its pupils were the size of Sophie's fists and ringed with gold. Are you a girl monster? It snorted. A boy monster? It blinked at her. She decided that meant that it was a boy monster. He inched out from under the bed. She counted six tentacles. He also had four tiny legs with sharp, curved claws. Squatting beside the bed, he kneaded the carpet with his claws. Are you an in-the-closet monster or an under-the-bed monster? The dream bottle wasn't labeled, and we have lots of both. We even have a few on-the-ceiling monsters, but those aren't as common. She, was, she wasn't supposed to talk about her parents' dream collection, but since she was in a dream, talking to a dream creature, she decided the normal rules didn't apply. The monster crept farther into the moonlight. His fur was black, with hints of red and blue in it. She thought he was iridescent black. She liked the word iridescent. She learned it just the other week. You have beautiful iridescent fur. That means that you shine with different colors, Sophie said. You're a very handsome monster. The monster purred.
It's nice to see that you don't have any slime. So many dream monsters are coated in goo. She patted the blanket next to her. Do you want to come up? He hopped onto the bed. He was about half her size, though if he stretched out his tentacles, she bet he'd be larger. Instead, he curled his tentacles underneath him in coils of fur. She wanted to pet his fur. She wasn't sure she dared. He continued to watch her with his large, lemur eyes. I bet the dreamer who thought you up was scared of cats, Sophie said. I've never had a cat, or a dog, or any kind of pet. I've always wanted a pet. I wish you could be my pet. The monster nudged her hand with his nose. She felt her breath catch in her throat. He had so many sharp teeth that they couldn't all fit in his mouth. A row of teeth stuck out beyond his gums. He wormed his head under her hand. His fur felt softer than cotton and smoother than silk. Sophie stroked his head and scratched behind his ears. Sighing happily, the monster closed his eyes. She lay down next to him, continuing to pet him. He began to snore, and Sophie bit back a laugh that bubbled up inside her. His snore sounded like a toy train, and after a while, she fell asleep. She woke to her parents' screams. Uh-oh, she thought. Sophie opened one eye and then the other. Her mother was, oddly, perched on top of a table next to the dream distiller. She held a broom and was brandishing it like a sword. Her father held a fire extinguisher with the nozzle pointed at her. Don't move, Sophie, Dad said. It's okay, baby. Don't be scared. Mom's face was chalky, as if she'd used powder instead of blush on her cheeks. Her voice sounded unusually shrill. Sophie didn't move. She was lying on the floor. Her head rested against a cabinet, and her feet were stuck in a pile of sponges and mops. She had the other she had the open, empty blue bottle in her left hand. Curled against her right side was a furry warmth. Her mom her mom tightened her grip on the broomstick. Kenneth, what is that? Some sort of badger, Dad said. It has six tails, Mom pointed out. Sophie shifted her head slightly. Her monster was curled up beside her, still snoring, but the cupcake pink sheets and the rose wallpapered bedroom were gone. She was home in her parents' dream shop beneath the bookstore. They're tentacles, not tails. Badgers don't have tentacles, Dad said. Sweetie, you know it's not a badger, Mom said to him. It looks like a badger, Dad insisted. He inched closer. The floorboards creaked under his feet. He stopped as the monster gave a whistle-like snort in his sleep. It looks nothing like a badger. Sophie, did it hurt you? It's a he, Sophie said, and he's really very nice. Can I keep him? Please? She shifted so that she could look at the slumbering dream monster. If you ignored all the tentacles and the sharp teeth and the sheer size of him, he could almost pass for a house cat. Maybe a house cat with an enormous appetite. Absolutely not, Mom said. I think it's a wombat, Dad said, or a wolverine, some W animal. Sophie, if you could inch away, I'll spray it with the fire extinguisher. Your mother will incapacitate it with the broom, and then we can look up what it is. His voice was light, but Sophie saw that his hands were shaking. Her parents were scared, and they were trying not to scare her. Sophie wrapped her arms around the monster. Don't hurt him! The monster woke up. Lashing out with his tentacles, he snapped his jaws and snarled. Her parents rushed forward, but Sophie jumped up to block them. Stop! She shook her finger at the monster. You shop too! Cringing, the monster whimpered. Sophie, what's in your hand? Mom was frowning at the blue bottle that Sophie still had clutched in her hands. Did you... Oh, Sophie! I am sorry! Sophie stared down at her sneakers, unable to meet her parents' eyes. They had told her time and time again to leave the bottles alone. It was only a monster in the closet dream. Both of her parents were silent. The monster growled softly and leaned against her ankles. She bent and scratched behind his ears. He bared his teeth at her parents. Be nice, she told him. She risked a glance up at them. Her parents didn't look angry, but they did look extremely worried. Sophie felt her heart thump faster, and not in the pleasant way that it had within the dream. Her father set down the fire extinguisher. Her mother laid down the broom. Tell me the dream, 
Dad said quietly. Sophie described the room and how the monster had emerged from the closet. She told them how she'd spoken to him and how they'd fallen asleep. And that was it, she said. It was a nice dream. You made it a nice dream, Mom said. I doubt it started out that way. The monster was undoubtedly meant to eat you. The monster made a chirping sound, as if to deny he would ever do such a thing. And he pressed closer to Sophie's ankles. She caught her balance on the counter. He was heavy. See, he's sweet, she said. Mom sighed. She looked at her hopefully. She knew that sigh. It meant that Mom was about to cave. Sophie, we won't hurt your new friend, but we will need you to step away from him so we can turn him back into his dream self. Kenneth, pass me one of those dream catchers. No! Sophie shrieked. She threw her arms around the monster's neck. Please, I promise I'll take care of him. You won't even know he's here. Her father climbed a stepladder and took down a dream catcher. It was a pretty one, a circle of soft wood with a spiderweb-like tangle of string in the center. Charms and crystals hung from the strings, and feathers dangled from the bottom. He handed it to Mom. The monster shrank back and bared his teeth. Give him a chance! Sophie said. He doesn't deserve to be sent away. He's special, can't you see? And he likes me. Sophie, dreams don't belong in the real world, Mom said. He shouldn't be here. Holding the dream catcher, she stepped toward Sophie and the monster. But he is, Sophie cried. Maybe he's here for a reason. Maybe he's supposed to be my friend. I want a friend. You never let me have friends. Mom halted. She looked pained, as if Sophie's words had jabbed her. That's not true. You have friends at school. Friends have playdates. Friends don't keep secrets from each other. Her parents exchanged glances. And you think this thing will be your friend? Dad asked. He's a monster. He could decide you're his midnight snack. He could rampage through the town. Last thing this town needs is a rampaging monster. He didn't say it with much conviction. Sophie sensed she might be winning. Sophie squatted beside the monster. If you stay, will you be my friend? The monster licked her cheek. Then he looked directly into her eyes with his wide lemur eyes and said in a gravelly voice, Yes, I will be an excellent friend for you, Sophie. Mom dropped the dream catcher. He talks! Sophie patted the monster's head. He's a very clever monster. Please, please let him stay. The monster lolled her tongue out and stuck his extra tentacles behind him so he looked more like a cat or stuffed animal than a monster. He turned his wide eyes on Sophie's parents. Oh, well, Dad said, we want you to have friends, real friends, but... Mom knelt in front of the monster. If you mean my daughter any harm, I will personally skin you before shoving you back into a dream. Understood? The monster managed to look solemn as he nodded. Mom fixed her gaze on Sophie. Sophie had never seen her look so serious. If we keep him, and I said if, you must make three promises to me. One, you will never drink another dream. Two, you will not let anyone see your monster. And three, you will never, ever tell anyone what you can dream can become real. Sophie nodded vigorously. She wrapped her arms around her monster's neck. He wound her tentacles around her waist. One of his tentacles patted her shoulder. Dad took Sophie's hand in his. Repeat the promises. I'll never drink another dream. I'll never let anyone see monster. And I'll never tell. Can I keep him? Please, please, please. There are people out there who might, Dad began. Don't scare her, Mom said. She should be scared, Dad said. This is serious. We are taking a risk we might regret, and she must understand the consequences. The monster spoke again for a second time. I will protect her. He wound his tentacles tighter around her, comfortingly warm. Very well. Mom stood and straightened her shirt. Now that, now that this was resolved, Sophie could tell she was moving on. We're having fish for dinner. What do you eat, monster? Small children, he said hopefully. Mom recoiled. 
joking, the monster said. I am telling a joke. I am a funny monster, aren't I? Hilarious, Dad said dryly. Monster untangled himself from Sophie and trotted after Mom. Just a few hamsters would be fine. Or mice. I like mice. And that was how Monster came to join Sophie's family.